All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Overshot, a paintball podcast. Just wanted to dive in real quick, thank our two generous sponsors. Uh, first one being Dizana Sports, makers of the Grind Air Gloves, the SF Joggers. We're actually going to be having some new joggers designed up soon. Uh, I actually just got a box of 100 gloves in, so if anybody needs some gloves, definitely check them out. Uh, Dizanasports.com, check them out below and use code Overshot uh, for 10% off. And then our second sponsor for today's episode is uh, Volcano USA. They co- came out with a couple new colorways uh, as well on their new backpacks. Um, I know a um, bunch of teams are sponsored out by them, the ML Kings. I know a couple guys use their bags. We're using them as well. Uh, so definitely check them out at uh, VolcanoUSA.com um, and use code OVERSHOT10 for 10% off. Um, but without further ado, we got Jim uh, Jimbo, as we know him, or uh, Tubes. <laughs> over here on the east coast um from you know he just got on ML kings but what we want to talk to him about is uh jim how did you get your start in paintball um i started actually in the woods um my friends they had just gotten some guns so they wanted to play uh i had like a few acres in the back of my house so we kind of just jumped in the woods one day we played um i had never played before i thought it was stupid I had like <laughs> grown up shooting real guns. I'm like, why am I gonna shoot this toy gun? Like, doesn't make any sense. I went out, right. played with them, and <laughs> they shit on me. They, <laughs> I got destroyed <laughs> all day. It was miserable, and I am super competitive. So I'm like, I'm gonna get better and beat these motherfuckers. And then, uh, you know, I kind of. We just kept on playing every weekend. You know, we go to Sports Star. You get those five thousand monster balls and uh yeah. and just fuck like, each other up fuck in the woods. these animals dude i'm gonna start <laughs> hunting my fellow man yeah yeah pretty much <laughs> and then um yeah you know it just progression real that i realized there's a few fields on long island at the time um so like would go on bring your own paint days so it's cheaper um and i was like 12 13 years old so um cost was like all we really cared about we could all like pull together some money to go get like a box of paint at sports authority, get our parents to, you know, carpool to bring us there and like have a good night. Um, and How yeah, old were you when you started? Uh, 12, 13. Yeah. Um, I didn't start playing tournaments till I was, I guess 14 or 15. I realized, you know, there's an avenue for that. Uh, cause I'd played, you know, other sports and then, um, some medical conditions actually came up and I couldn't play like your traditional sports. So I went, that's when I like really dove into the competitive paintball scene. Cause like I was allowed to compete in that. Um, yeah. Yo, so, if you don't mind me asking what, how, what, like what caused you to stop playing? Like what condition? Um, I have a heart condition. So, uh, I, had, Oh dang dude. I had a rheumatic fever. So it was like strep throat went to my heart. Um, so like none of my valves closed. I have a bunch of murmurs. So uh, Fuck, dude, they were kind of concerned about like you know coaches, you know pushing you to to practice more than you you should. Yeah, be. Um, bro, you're now, the fucking Terminator, dude. Look at you, <laughs> shit, dog. Yeah, now I'm kind of like, uh, you know, that was um, pediatric. So they were concerned, and now I'm kind of like. Uh, my cardiologist now is like, no, you're you're good, you know, lift weight, do awesome, you know, do what you got to do. So there's still some damage to the heart, but I mean, it's nothing that uh, can't be repaired, but it doesn't hinder my performance that I know of. Like, you know, it's been pretty much my whole life that I've had it. So, <laughs> yeah, dude, like you said, you're a competitor. You like to compete, dude. It's in you. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, I, it's just always been me. I. I remember once when I was a kid, I played hockey. I was a big hockey player. I broke my Dude, wrist um, on a trampoline. Oh, sick. Uh, <laughs> so, like, they threw a cast on me, and I just, you know, gloved up and played, like, the season yep. with a broken wrist because, you know, it's underneath all the gear. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly, it didn't matter, bro. you know? Um, if you could play, you play, dude. That's how it is. That's it. That's it, yeah. But is that you? Sorry, I had to turn the conversation to a wall. I was just curious. No, about man, it's, why it's, it's all, that's how these things roll, man. Wherever, the, wherever it takes us. So, what was your first um, competitive team, and 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 how did you end up finding that team? Um, I actually got. I played like some local three man, like young guns, um, 
at arena paintball, I guess, back in the day. And, uh, my first point ever at a tournament, um, we're playing, don't really know the rules. This is still center flag. So it was the point system. Um, yeah. so, <laughs> you know, it comes down to a one-on-one -on -one, me and this other kid and we flip sides of the field. I shoot him. Awesome. I run, I grab the flag. I hang it on my own box, give them the 50 points. <laughs> that was my first point, first tournament ever. Uh, <laughs> so that was like that. That kicked it all off. But you know, I was I was hooked after that. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I guess then I played with like this local team at a high velocity. Then the first five man tournament I went to is also a shit show. Is that <laughs> Captain Carl's paintball? Um, that it's no longer around. I think it was in Pennsylvania or something at the time, but um. It was a big series back in the day. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, this is like 2009 or eight, something like that. So uh, 2009, I got it pulled up here with Havoc. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we actually went down. It was me, this kid Anthony, and his two cousins. We didn't even have five people. Um, so <laughs> we went down to this tournament. We we're kind of getting beat up, whatever. Uh, and all the guys <clears throat> from my local field, they were on this team. We were playing Division Four, I think, and they were D three, or we were D five, and they were D four, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so they were all there, and all my teammates were like, "We're quitting." I was just like, I was talking to them like James, like I, all the paints already paid for, the tournaments paid for, you know. It's like fuck it, keep playing. So I'm like, all right. So I played like the That's last two be. matches by myself, um, and I actually won a point. <laughs> I shot a guy <laughs> off a break. They got a major, and then I won a two-on-one. So that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, yeah then box, just, kids. That must have been pretty, pretty much. Exciting. Yeah, that was pretty pretty cool. Um, but then uh, this other local team, all in. They're a bunch of like older guys that, uh, you know, like they had talked to my parents. Um, so like they were, they met them all. They were all good guys. So like didn't mind me going and, and playing with them. So yeah, natural progression played with them then i started um high velocity wrecking crew back in 2010 2011 had a few different names i think it started as high by crew something like that and we played 2011 new jersey open mm -hmm. maybe uh or whatever the, yep, the new you're jersey right, open dude. was right. <laughs> right so here, that was the inception of that team the following year i got picked up um at a tryout the Wolfpack tryout for uh, Meadowlands Grind. So it was Wolfpack's like Division Three team at the time. So I left to do that. I was still helping the high buy team out. And then um, I think that was 2012. And then I played Division Two the following year. And then they picked me up for Semi Pro um, for one event. And then the organization kind of crumbled. Uh, I started playing with the Brooklyn Bears, or we were Stratton Oakmont Bears at the time. Yeah. but Duh, bears. Yeah, today, you know, everyone knows them as the Brooklyn Bears, so I play with them for a bit. Uh, I went off to college, came back. I play with kind of a local Division Two team, the Stingray All Stars. Mm -hmm. uh, so was, were you when, when you sorry, but when you were in college, was there any thought of like the uh, NCPA or anything like the college league or anything like that? Um, f mm. If my school didn't have it. I went to like okay. this little hole in the world school in the middle of nowhere upstate. But I did play some NCPA tournaments. Like I guessed with Oswego. Um, and those tournaments okay. are actually really fun. You know, they're uh, at the time, I don't know what they are now, what format, but it was, you know, traditional X ball. So it was like two 15 minute halves. So I remember we right. played this team, like we were just colors. So it was like red team, blue team. And there's actually pretty good teams. Like red team is a lot of lift guys. The blue team is like a lot of Upton 187 guys at the time. Okay. And like the Hurricanes. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. And I remember we played like this orange team and we went to half. And we were beating them like 22 to 1. <laughs> and I think Let we go. finished that game off like 37 1, something like that. And it brought like the team that I was on from seventh place all the way up to the third place seating because of like the point spread. Like we just. We're running yeah. down the field all all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you got nothing to lose, so fuck it. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, then after I played a Division Two season with this Stingray team, then 
I came back to the high velocity guys to uh, try to help them progress through, you know, the, uh, the divisional ranks. I played right. some overseas tournaments over in London, Australia. Uh, and uh, yeah. Oh, dude, I, I, sick for what teams? I played with uh, the Eskimo brothers in Australia for the Super 7 series. And then yeah, I yeah, played yeah. with like uh, pretty much like I think it was four of the Stingray guys, Scott Kemp and uh, this girl Stella from Germany. We went over and played. Um, Division two, London, NXL Europe. That's when like the Tortugas were just absolutely destroying everyone. No, and they, yeah, yeah, and they uh, they actually wound this not wound up knocking us out of the tournament. So it was pretty Boom. good, but it it's so sweet, you know. It, to go the there, yeah. yeah. I mean, even just to see it at the time, it was M five hundred, and um, it it just felt like so good to be over there and playing like. Uh, I don't know. Everyone, the hospitality over there is kind of crazy. Um, you know, they they're not trying to rip you off. Like even like the food vendors and everything, they had like lunch specials. I think it was five dollars to like burger, fries, and a beer. Like it was a dollar for like shots. Like it was kind of yeah. nuts. Um, the girl Stella that was on our team though was uh, she's from Germany, so she knew like seven languages or something. So she would like introduce introduce us to like a French team then a German team and like all these different teams. And it's just like, cool. It's uh it's like one big like party over there. It's, it's kind of nuts. Um, yeah. But it's the M500 like is of, really cool. Yeah. Like most Americans only speak one language. It's so funny. Like I feel, we feel so dumb. And yeah, you go to the like, French from Germany, <laughs> yeah. spoke seven. Like, I think that's a lot, like a lot of like international people speak multiple languages and we're like, mm -hmm. Sup, bro? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but but uh, anyway, so you came back to help out like wrecking crew and stuff. So yeah. like, uh, talk to us about the progression of that because I know they started to bump up levels for sure, and I know you were a part of that. Yeah, um, I mean, I've been I started the team, so every single year I've I've made it, you know, a, a priority to help them as much as possible. Um, because like, I mean, now I think when I look at that APPA, it's like 60 or 80 like people have gone through the program. Like, so we've had like division three, division four, some five man teams. Mm -hmm. So uh, like I've gotten to know every single person that's went through that team, you know, pretty closely. They're all friends of mine. So definitely holds like a special place in my heart. And I grew up playing at high velocity paintball. So it's like their flagship team. So for me, it's very important to see them be competitive every single year, do what I can to just help them out. Um, so, I mean, they've been competing Division three for, for probably too long now, but the issue is, you know, people come in, then the other people leave, so it's like a constant rebuild. I mean, mm -hmm. even this year, you know, it, we got a few new pieces where – trying to incorporate in, you know, some of the new guys from last year finally stepped up earned their starting spots. And now we're filtering some new guys in with, you know, me leaving. Um, we had another guy leave. So it's like, just, it's almost like a constant rebuild, which kind of sucks, but, um, yeah, the, I don't know, the foundation really is gel. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean like the, some of the core guys are still there, but now it's like new core guys. So it's always trying to find that, chemistry especially off the field as well as on the field um but all the they have all the resources they need they bring in marcelo in um i was gonna say i mean they're going out of their pocket i mean i'm sure marcelo's a nice guy but he's not doing it for free so i mean i'm sure you're paying him out of your own like that's no one's doing that for you that's you guys you know so like you guys are out there trying to do it you know yeah i mean um the guy that runs the team now rob is uh he helps, you know, bring Marcelo out and, you know, organize everything and, and helps as much as he can financially for those guys. And super lucky for a divisional team. They have a, a lot of resources behind them. Um, so it really is, it falls on the players to, to really make the commitment the work. step up and yeah. And, and put in the work, which is, uh, you know, something I try to preach to them uh, and, and help them out with, uh, you know, I haven't, taken a weekend off since world cup i've played both days pretty much every single weekend since i came back from florida uh so i mean i've been 
uh, like I said, I'm a competitor. We lost yeah. to the guys that won I the division this year. Now. And oh yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, yeah, it's snowing right now. There's a foot and a half, two feet of snow in the field. I, <laughs> it's a little cold. Your toes get wet, but it, you need a gun in your hands, you know, as much as possible. So I'm a firm believer in getting out there, regardless of the weather. I mean the the snow, yeah, it kind of sucks, but it's sort of similar to the rain. You know, you can't really see where you're shooting, so it, it kind of puts you in that situation that you're going to see at some of the tournaments, like when we have, you know, those downpours in, like, Texas and Chicago and, and stuff like that. Even Florida this year, I mean, we had the early morning games, and it was torrential downpour every single game. So, I mean, it, it's just going to help. It, even though it kind of sucks, you feel like it's – not very productive but i mean you still have a gun in your hand you're still shooting paint it's it's as productive as you want to make it you could still run and shoot lane you know snap shoot um so yeah for me it's just important to be out there as much as possible especially now that you know i i made it into the pro division right so um you know the guys on the ml kings uh, five of us are brand new never played pro um so for us, the the only thing we could do, we're not going to be more experienced than any of these teams. So we have to outwork them. That's that's all we have in our pocket, you know? Um, yeah. So uh, hard work Florida, means talent when talent doesn't work hard, dude. Exactly. I mean, there's pro teams in Texas, California that have nice weather all year round. Tampa oh, yeah, damage all the time. Playing. So, um, for me, I, I can't let some snow, you know, deter me from, from getting out there. And then it's just, you know, off the field too. I, right now I want to lose like 10 pounds by the time I go back down to Florida for the next practice. So it's two days at the gym every day. And then on the weekends I'm playing paintball and then going to the gym. So, um, yeah, I'm putting the work in off the field also. So I'm not getting tired, not getting winded when – they need me to go out there. I'm ready. I'm prepared physically, mentally, you know, um, fundamentally. I'm just trying to trying to get as prepared as I possibly can to, to help this team, you know, progress. No, Parker, you touched on so many things that I want to touch, touch on. So we're going to dig into like a bunch of stuff you just said a ton right now. So one of the things we we're talking about this off air, but like you're talking about you had a weight transformation. You're talking about you dropped 60 pounds recently. So mm -hmm. What kind of things were you doing to lose the weight? Was it dietary? Because I feel like that's something everyone can, anyone can do, can take advice. So like we can all eat a little better. We can all do a little bit more. I would say even if it's five minutes, do if you do five minutes more than you did yesterday, then you're it's like, you're going to get better, you know? Yeah. Um, so me personally, I, I dove in a hundred percent. I saw, I, I came, started, uh, classes online i became a nutrition coach and a trainer uh with the uh nasm national academy of sports medicine so i did that i started doing like some circuit training some hit training mm -hmm. diet mainly but it was it's really not hard <laughs> it's, yeah. as shitty as it sounds like there's no um you know there's no shortcut it, it's just Train hard, there's no eco. secret formula. <laughs> just do it and do it over and over and over and over yes, again. It's repetition. It's dedication. It's it's doing it. You, you mm -hmm. can't half-ass it and expect results. So, you know, it was the same thing. Waking up. Uh, I'm an electrician, so I'm waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to the gym, doing an hour of cardio, go to work. After work, going back to the gym, doing my lifts, doing a little bit of more, a little bit more cardio. And then just eating right, you know. So it's mm -hmm. uh, you, it's nothing crazy. <laughs> Watch what you eat. Cook your own food. You know, don't go out. Don't use right. oils if you don't have to. I mean, it's uh, it just it's sucks, really dude. It. All the stuff that tastes so good is so terrible for you. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which that's something I've uh, actually because I, last November I, I lost the sixty pounds between November and April. Um, so 
after through the that. winter once too so that's crazy because that's when everyone says it's so hard like that's what the, the per person who's <laughs> lazy who doesn't want to do anything says it's like oh it's the winter i'm inside all the time that's why i'm putting on all these pounds so you dropped 60 pounds through that period oh uh, yeah and i both this is when gyms were like closed so me and my friend had a gym in his shed but no <laughs> he <laughs> no ac yeah. so in the summer in the winter we're out there and you know two jackets, a car heart. Yeah. Just uh, cause it's all we had, but got to put the work in. Right. So, um, that's what we did, but yeah, now I've, um, I try, I'm trying to be a better cook and I've actually started you now make my own recipes and doing things healthy because it sucks eating chicken, rice, broccoli for every single meal, you know, maybe throwing some turkey or fish in. It's really what you have to do for weight loss. Um, mm -hmm. the easiest way, because the cal, you know, the calories aren't hard to count. But now I'm trying to experiment and make these like dishes that taste good. They kind of emulate some of those flavors that you miss, you know, and right. uh, and it's still healthy. So I've been having some some success, you know, doing that. And uh, yeah, dude, it's tough. Like my girlfriend is always pissed because she's like, I want to eat different stuff. I'm like, well, I'm trying to eat healthy, so all we're eating is chicken and like broccoli and cauliflower and shit. Get used yeah. to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. For if you're doing that, the uh, you know, like a crock pot is great. You oh, dude, oh, I love my crock pot. Yeah, you could throw some stuff in there. You as, and this is for like me. I do construction. Typically, I can't heat my food back up, so. I've just noticed with that it's easier to eat and like uh, when you can't reheat it yeah opposed to like just some rice and chicken and broccoli it gets dry it's like frozen it, right now you know kind of sucks so right no but i do the same plus like i'm sure our listeners are loving this but <clears> like i i work on a farm so like i love to like put something in the crock pot turn that shit on i can go to work and i can come back and like it's all good dude i don't gotta worry about nothing that's the best thing if you're meal prepping you know you have portions for all week you know all week. even if you're yep. gonna eat it for every meal of the day you, you have it you know i have it you come so. home the house smells good dude it's like, <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but anyway so uh, i the other thing i really want to talk about was the ml king's trial because i thought what they did was like super interesting with the practice and then you know they had the invitational right after so they're able to try people out so yeah. like how like how did the practice go for you like how did they run it was it drills points like kind of help walk us through it a little bit um, so we got there, there's like 60 people. And, um, one thing I, I really do want to shout out the ML Kings guys for is, uh, how they ran that tryout. And I feel how every pro team, if they're going to have an open tryout should. So I know a lot of times in the past, like it's a tryout and everyone's like, oh, it's a money grab. Right. And, um, yeah. and a lot of times it kind of is, they know who they're picking up. Maybe they'll grab a kid from the tryout or whatever, but I right. didn't know a single one of these guys from you know a hole in the wall and uh i go down there it's a lot of like you know local texas kids uh texas florida kids they know them all by name you know so yeah, what up they're Tim? Friends. what up chris yeah so i'm like <laughs> oh here we go you know it's one of these right. and um so that that did not hinder their their decision at all you know the best guys got picked and there's even like some ex pro players there or current pro players, but maybe trying to make a switch, you know, a new team. And like, right. Typically they're like a shoe in, you know, it's like they have mm -hmm. no experience, this and that, but these guys, they, they took us based on merit, what they saw, what they thought they needed. And I thought that was like, that was pretty cool. Cause typically you don't see that. But so the tryout, um, we got there. Uh, and yeah, the first thing was like, split into two groups since it was so big um we did like a <laughs> we were calling it the nfl combine sprints <laughs> the, the speed ladder high yeah. knees um suicides you know kyle's <laughs> objective was to make people throw up what yeah. they want to do is make you tired how much do you want it are you gonna dig and, and you know give 110 percent, and then have to go out play points play situationals how are you going to perform when you're gassed, you know, because yeah. when you're in the pro division, you could play 14, 15 points, you know, you got to have the stamina and be able to perform under that physical and mental pressure, you know. Um, 
So they did that, and then the other group did like running, shooting, snap shooting, shooting off the break, um, stuff like that. And mm -hmm. then we went into like closing out drills. So I think it was like five on threes. Um, trying to think what we did the first. Oh, we uh, then they split us up randomly, and then we were playing the line of ML Kings guys that was there. Mm -hmm. So it was like Kyle, Greg, Greg. Um, I think Jose. Mingo, Dan, um, and Charlie. So, like, they were just mixing in, playing, um, beating us up. The second day, we split <laughs> into, like, uh, teams. You know, they cut half the people on the first day. So yeah. maybe even more. I think 20 of us came back from 60. Mm -hmm. Or I think it was 60 or 40. I, I'm not sure how many people were there, you know. Um, right, but, yeah, but they the second day, back quick. They were like, yeah. hey, well, you get the fuck out of here. Yeah, and then the second day, there's 20 of us, so it was four teams of five, I think. It was 15, three time, teams of five. Um, but we played matches, pretty mm -hmm. much. So we played each other, played the Kings, um, and did that rotation. And then they kind of, like, at the end of the day, split it up into 10, like, I guess, the real prospects. Yeah, and yeah. then um, they cut it to five. So it was, like, five people got invited to – Come play the invitation on the following weekend, dude. Uh, so, what was it like when you were one of the five, dude? Was like how fucking do you, were you, when you saw like like it's Survivor and five dudes <laughs> walked away and there's only five dudes left? You were like, yeah, oh, yeah, like, all I, right, all right. It was, uh, you know, it's kind of surreal for me. It, the job wasn't over. I still had to go the next weekend. The trial yeah. is not over. Um, so it was okay, cool. I have got to go catch a flight back to New York. <laughs> Let me <laughs> book my flight back to Florida for next week. It was a little bittersweet. I went with uh, one of my best friends, Ivan, who he now plays for Sacramento DMG. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So he was trying out too, and he didn't make it. So, like, you know, um, that kind of stuff. How far like, did he get? Uh, we both made it the same uh, cut. So he just okay. wasn't one of the final five. Uh, Gotcha. But yeah, I, yeah, it was just um, yeah, clear the head, focus. You know, nothing to me, nothing was accomplished at that point. So okay, I got to come back next week, prove that that I got what it takes. So um, right, yeah, that was, you made the playoffs, but it's time to get the chip. You know, that's it. Yeah, exactly. Nothing, nothing was accomplished at that point for me. It, right, it was more like it started all over again. Now you start from scratch. Now it's time to build it back up. Absolutely. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, came out for the invitational. We did, uh, we did pretty, pretty good. I mean, we only lost to damage, um, yeah. and NRG, uh, the NRG was pretty close, um, and damage, they kind of beat us up. The, the points were close. Um, mm -hmm. our shooting off the break was phenomenal. Kyle's gone. Greg's gone. I uh, just unreal. I think Kyle was shooting like two people off the snake side, like a bunch of <laughs> points. It didn't make any sense. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah dude, we Kyle's played good. a regular on the show. Like, and I follow Kyle on all the social medias and stuff. That dude is always getting after it. He's sweating a lot. Oh yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's all about it. Um, I mean, all those guys are. They, mm -hmm. Every single one, we know what we got to do. That's work. We got to outwork these guys, and and that's what we got. Um, but after the invitational, like takeaways were were pretty decent you know uh, yeah I, for for five brand new guys coming from the weekend before and to beat some you know the lower uh tier pro teams but we did pretty good and then we gave damage a fight i would say it's yeah. just the experience and the chemistry just just beat us because we we're getting the kills off the break we weren't letting Keith Brown live very much, which is, yeah. you know, that's a huge kill off the break. Um, but yeah, we couldn't close. Um, the Ed Edwards brothers are ridiculous gunfighters. I think I, they're okay. I think I heard, I think the guys are all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's the experience and the chemistry just came out and, you know, for five brand new guys on a roster of nine, uh, there's not a lot of chemistry, you know, going yeah. on. So, I think the starting point is great for that showing for literally five of us coming from the weekend before to, to play. Um, I think we, we did great and it's 
can only get better from here because now we're actually gonna have time together we're gonna practice together um so right. i mean it's things are only gonna go up uh, so there is to it uh, once we actually can work together better we understand each other you know we got our call outs down we got all of our all of our codes good uh, mm -hmm. we're gonna be pretty good um, no, I remember watching because like I watched it and we felt like, like Kyle's been on the show. We had we've had Greg before. So I was like, I'm going to check him out. I was expecting, you know, they got some new guys working in. Maybe this first like couple points won't be so hot. But like even the first match, like you guys kind of look crisp out there, man. You just yeah. it looked different, you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we played played pretty good. Uh, that's, I, I thought so. As far as I'm concerned. Um, and like you said, granted some lower tier pro teams but pro pro teams nonetheless i mean mm -hmm. yeah they put the work in they got to where they you know where they are through hard work and and they've been playing at the pro level for i think at least one or two seasons for most of those teams um yeah you no know, obviously besides damage but uh so yeah to come out brand new team uh barely not like kind of learning each other's names there because <laughs> yeah at yeah. the at the tryout, you're not learning all the guys' names that are at the tryout. So right, you're trying to beat those guys. They're not your friends at the tryout. Exactly. All right. Yeah. You're yeah. Being, Sorry, whoever. Like, and then <laughs> the next weekend, you're like, "All right, cool. Now you're my boy." <laughs> yeah. Man, yeah. Fight these dudes. We got to go fight Damage. Who's one of the greatest teams ever assembled? So, yeah, dude. What's your name again? Yeah. 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 <laughs> what, you kill one. I think you were kill one, if I remember correctly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, dude. So going into this season, I got we're gonna talk about like all the stuff you're doing to get ready. But what are your thoughts on how they're doing, like the Super Cup and all this other stuff? How are your thoughts on the breakdown, of the new schedule, and how everything's going down? I gotta be honest, I don't really look at that <laughs> Super Cup stuff. I, I know <laughs> we have four professional tournaments to play, yeah. So I, I'm worrying about those. I don't care about a Super Cup at this moment because we got to we got to get to the first event we got to show we belong there and then we got to i think win a tournament to get there or something like that i don't even really know right. how it works for the professional division right. so um, you don't care what it's called you're trying to win them all whatever the fuck you guys want to call it yeah i, I want to <laughs> go out that first event um you know and obviously set realistic standards i think most teams you know they're saying we want to make Make a Sunday, which yeah, of course, everyone wants to make a Sunday. But I think the real challenge is is beating an elite team. So beating mm -hmm. a, a top tier team because there's a lot of teams that squeak in that two and two. They won their softer games and then they, they yeah. just can't hang with the top teams. So right. more than making Sunday, it's beating a, a an elite team, beating an X Factor, a Dynasty, a Damage, an Impact. You know that I feel like is even. A bigger marker than than just making it to Sunday, you know. Dude, right? Because that's when you learn what you got to do to be successful, right? You win that one game, and it's almost like I mean, not exactly this, but like, okay, let's just do that every time. Remember, remember what we just did. <laughs> let's do that every single fucking time. <laughs> uh, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> right, hopefully. Right, again, easier said than done. But yeah, when you do it once, you got the blueprint. It's like, yo, we can do this. We just got to do it again. Is that so hard? Yeah, and then you make that. A consistent thing i mean it, you look right at, and now like, the next step right is making that insistent thing beating them I mean, all if the you time. look at revo or ac dallas uh teams that started you know in the i mean I right think ac dallas was challengers but they started they weren't great they were kind of winning those soft games sort of working up they're on the cusp and then a few pieces in they start beating the elite teams oh we could hang this is how we got to do it and now they're in the top four i mean i don't know what ac dallas is going to do this year but i'm saying you know their previous roster they they started you know through the divisions uh, so yeah and the I same thing they had to fight all the way i don't think they're going to be like a top i don't think they're going to be a bottom five i don't think they're going to be a top five but i think they're going to be all right man because again you know you're alluding to like you know big rob with hvp and stuff like it's painful fit with a couple of guys and and they got mm -hmm. a lot of they got stuff behind them they got greg paulie they got paintball fit which is uh, the greatest field i've ever like i, I i've seen videos they, we talked they to play guys. a lot of paintball and they have one of the best coaches i would say in the game i mean besides for 
Hinman, I, I would say Greg Pauly for bringing kids up and making them yeah. pros. They're probably the two best coaches to do it to develop brand new professional players. Um, as far as I can remember, you know, I could think of, they're just super good at, at getting people to that level. They, they kind of, they know what they're doing. So I don't think they're going to be a bad team whatsoever. I just, I don't know if they're going to be as good as the previous the roster. Yeah. Previous roster, but no, I, I don't think so either. And I, and I think a, another big help is, you know, I even remember when we were locked down up here in the Northeast, those dudes were still playing. Texas yeah. don't care about COVID. They were, they were out there with skids. GI was bringing the skids right there to them. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it won't, it won't be for lack of resources. And I, and I think though, but with the, with that being said, those kids got a lot on their shoulders that I think if they don't, get up to speed quick. I don't think it's a, uh, I think they'll find new people to take those kids spot. Any, the weight you know? of that name is heavy, dude. You are very right. The weight of that name is heavy to carry. I mean, I played those PB fit guys in divisional and they were shooting three of us off the break. So <laughs> I know they're, they're pretty <laughs> dude, good at shooting they're, off the break. I, real. They're, they're good. I, but uh, yeah, I, I think they're going to, they're going to be decent this year, even losing all those guys. Um, but yeah, just the progression is what I was trying to get at. Uh, you saw AC Dallas do it, um, and and Revo. Those are the two big names that I could think of that are consistently now in the top, right? You know, top eight, top four, uh, and the, yeah, they had you know they had a battle. They started beating those good teams, and they started becoming one of those good teams. <clears throat> No, dude, I totally agree. So something else I would like to ask is that, so we're going into what some people call the paintball off season. So what is something you found? Cause you're, you're into weight loss and fitness. Like if you can give us maybe one thing that people can do like inside that can translate to maybe on the paintball field. Like personally, I have an agility ladder. I love that shit, bro. I'm constantly doing different combinations to work on my footwork. What's maybe something um, that you would say would like for someone who's like, yeah, man, especially now you're locked down. Maybe they don't go to the gym. They something they could do in their house. Maybe. I I think the biggest thing you could do is work on flexibility. Really? I, I mean, it's not anything fundamental, but if you don't have a gym open or you're in the Northeast, it's snowing. You can't get out of your house. Like all you need is a band mm -hmm. and you don't even need that. Really. You can do just do yoga in your house and that's just going to make you more comfortable and uncomfortable positions you know and be able to come out lower you're going to be able to adjust better you're going to you're going to feel better in the awkward positions you're going to put your body in the more flexible you are um so i think flexibility is a is a big thing that you can work on if you're like trapped in your house <laughs> even if you're not it's something i think we neglect a lot as paintball players especially in the divisions um you know, teams aren't necessarily stretching and, and warming up, you know, uh, compared to the guys at the pro level. Now, you know, it, we do like a roll call with the ML Kings guys because mm. we're all from all over the place. So, you know, Mingo will send a video in. He's going on a three-mile run. Kyle's always running, you know. Yeah. Greg will be like, oh, I did yoga today, and I did, you know, the, this. I think he does P90X, something like that. Um <laughs> With Sean, you know, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> we're all we're all trying to do something, and yeah, you get those at at home workouts too. You know, the, the thirty minute. If you have if you don't have a lot of time, you do the P ninety X or Insanity or like uh, what is it? Um, I love fitness. I think they do one. Um, so like yeah, you go on train. YouTube, find stuff. Just simple things. You work on your core, work on stretching. You can do push ups at your house simple stuff like that. And as soon as you possibly can, I'd say get to the field. Mm -hmm. um, Cause you, there's nothing you, unless you have a backyard and you can, you could shoot paintballs at your house, but you don't have an air station. So unless you have a bunch right. of bottles kind of makes it hard, but uh, I would just get that on the field as much as possible. Um, right. Well, no, there's no substitute for that playing. Like if you can get to the field yeah, and no. play, definitely go do that. And there's, there's no excuse really. Uh, if you're serious about, competing and, and getting better and getting to the level that you aspire to be you there's no reason you can't do it i mean life stuff comes up but 
if you got nothing going on, you're just lazy and you're like, oh, I really don't want to get off my couch today. Well, that's that's not a good reason, you know. Right. That's why I always try and like I give like example stuff you could do like at home. Like I'm a big proprietor. Like, dude, if you're just sitting at home and you're watching TV, just like plank for a little bit. You ever plank? A minute will feel like a fucking hour, dude. You'll want to fucking sit back down before the commercials are over. I guarantee it. That's what uh, uh the owner of the ML Kings, Charlie. That's what he says. Um, if there's an NFL, I think, player that is the same thing. That is just push ups and sit ups he does. So he's yeah. like, yeah, if you're at home sitting on the couch, every commercial, get down, do some push ups. Next commercial, get down, do some sit ups. Do as many as you can for the day. I, you know, so I see no point, and I was like, like more more than what you did yesterday is going to improve you. So like, especially all those people that don't do anything, like they're like, Oh, I don't know where to start. It's like, bro, start at one push up. How about that? And then maybe tomorrow do two and then do <laughs> yeah. like, you know, you don't have to start with doing a hundred or like work out for like an hour straight. Like dude, playing for five seconds, then 10, like, you know, oh, absolutely. I just feel like, um, it, but don't that, do zero, do more than zero. Definitely <laughs> don't do zero. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But, uh, you know, I finally got uh, – since I started playing, I want to play pro. I'm finally here. The work is just starting now. It, yeah. It's not like a celebration. I made it. It's like now that gym time, that field time, it's it's a job. I'm not mm -hmm. getting paid for it, but there's – my teammates are depending on me. The owner is depending on me. Our sponsors are depending on us. So they're putting up their faith in us, you know, giving us all the resources that we need. So we have to put in the work on our own time to to give back to them, you know. Um, Dude, that's why I love so. paintball because it's like it's about not letting down your man. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what's so important. Like, yeah, you're not going to get mm -hmm. rich from playing paintball, and like you, you could very easily skip going to the gym and doing this other stuff. But then you feel like you're letting the dude on the box next to you, like next to you down, and that's like what doesn't sit well to you. Especially like, that's how kind of I am too. Especially when you know they're working harder than you. Uh, right some guys on the bench working harder than you and dude for sure he's just gonna be fast and more crisp I, it's you gotta you gotta put just as much work in as your teammates and then more work in than your enemies <laughs> dude if not they'll leave you for sure bro because trust me that shit don't like like i said if you're doing zero and the dude next to you in the box is doing a lot bro they're gonna fucking leave for someone else who's doing the same work that they am they don't want to be there or you're i mean Everybody wants to play. Anyone that's playing competitive paintball wants to play pro. Yeah. So there's thousands of people. I'll take you know my spot or you know whoever spot that isn't putting the work in. We're not yeah. one bro, million. Pro. We're I mean, that's how you got yeah. in. That's how yeah. you got in. You know what I mean? You're taking somebody's spot. You know, maybe not. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody's name. We don't. We might not know their name. But I mean, there was definitely. Guys that are on ML Kings that were on ML Kings that aren't on now. And then, like you said, just because you're there doesn't mean you got to stop. Like, you want to have – now you got to have – now you're on it, but you don't want to be the ninth, tenth guy. You want to be a starter. And then when, when that's yeah. over, you want to win matches, and then you want to be the best player in the league. So, like you said, the work even starts even more now than ever before, Jim. Yeah, I, I mean, I have no staying power. I'm disposable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, that dude's knowing at guy. your heels trying to take your spot. Like, that dude's spot you just took is fucking now like, fuck, dude, no, I got to work harder to take his spot. So that's why you got to work even harder because they're coming for you. A hundred percent, yeah. I mean, just looking at the kids that came to the to the tryout, you know, it could have easily been a, one of them over me. And yeah. it's still good if I don't go out and perform and, and do what I'm supposed to do. I mean, it's going to show there's no hiding it. I, so why would you keep someone that's not putting the work in that everyone else is? Fuck it. Get rid of him. Bring the new kid in. see what he could do. Yeah. He don't work. Get rid of him. Bring another one in. There, <laughs> there's so many people trying to play paintball at the highest level. So yeah, dude. It, you you got to keep working at it. Uh, there's no way around it. Yeah, dude, and you can try and say it's not, but like a paintball team is a sports team, bro. So people like like if you're running a team, that's how you're running it, dude. Like next mm -hmm. dude up, man. Like, dude, if the backup quarterback is better than the starter, I got bad news, bro. The guy's gonna be starting games soon enough, man. Mm -hmm. And that backup better be ready, you know. And so, he better be ready. I mean, the spot I play is is usually that two or three spot on the field, you know. Mm -hmm. So 
I got to be ready to take a guy like Kyle's spot or Greg's spot. You know, those guys are good. They're, you know, some of the best players on the, the Kings. I mean, so I have to be ready. And if I want to become that starter, I have to put in that work. When I have the opportunity to go in, I have to be prepared. So there's no way around it. Yeah. Hey, but if you're I'm not just it. as good or better, then it, why would they keep me? I bring the next guy in. So I'm constantly working on the craft because I want to be the guy that when I get my chance, I'm good. They know they don't have to worry if Kyle needs a breather, if you know, if anyone needs a breather. They're like, okay, next guy. He could fill. Dude, be ready. You know? Be yeah. ready. You got to be ready at all times. Uh, so it's just. Yeah. Yeah, and you know if they get ready when you stay ready, right? Mm -hmm. No, but it's sick to hear. I love to hear like a local guy, like especially the two days that you work out before work and after work. I'm gonna be honest. I got to, I do mine before, not after. After work, I'm fucking spent, dog. If I don't go right to the gym, I <laughs> I get home, <laughs> I make something, I sit on the couch. There's no yeah. shot. So I don't even let myself go home. I throw my bag, you know, That's in the smart. car in the That's morning smart. And, and go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's that's the hard one for me the after work i just can't but so like again going into uh the off season do you guys have any schedule like scheduled team practices going in like or how because yeah tough. you guys you guys are kind of scattered so i like i get how tough that is but do they have anything i guess to say mandatory we're like hey whatever this weekend we are grinding you got to be here these two whatever you know yeah we have um i think we have a schedule, so it's at least <laughs> once a month. Um, so I go down the 26th to the 28th this month, and then okay. um, that's Barely our this first month. mandatory. And then the following weekend is Virginia for the invitation. And then yeah. um, I think that rolls us right into... Something's in that? March, right? Uh, April. So then I guess it's the last weekend of March, first weekend of April, and then the tournament or something like that. So um, it's at least one, once a month, the doubles uh, before an event, and then practice at the event. So um, that's the mandatory stuff. And then for me, I'm at the local field, um, just trying to help support and, and grow the grow the game around here every single weekend that, uh, that I'm not at a mandatory. Um, yeah, yeah. And now we have... Um, some of the Brooklyn Bears Shout guys are coming you. back and playing, so I'm, I'm going to be drawing with them a lot during mm -hmm. the offseason just uh, to help help me stay sharp. Um, yeah, yeah so. good guys. We're going to have some of them to talk about their comeback. We've already had Robbie. We've had Magic Mike. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, They're all good dudes, man. Uh, dropping, some, dropping some news there, dude. I don't know if that's <laughs> well, <focused> consumption. <laughs> Whether they're back? I think that's what I heard. So. Someone else and for, someone else said it too. I heard it somewhere else. I don't know. Some of them been playing, so we're just. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, you know where I heard it? LJ. LJ said it. Oh yeah. On mm -hmm. uh, Marcelo's, I think they're talking about the Bears coming back, so okay. I can say it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, so another thing I would love to talk about because. On. Well, I'll have to have magic bag. Magic. I mean, again, I'm going to take this conversation turn to a brick wall. But the we had magic on before. He was a fucking great conversation. That dude was legit. Uh, magic's the man. He's so awesome. legit. Yeah, he helped us a lot when uh, when we started the Bears. We had no help, no funding, no field. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> high velocity just opened like an outdoor speedball field. All we had was like an indoor field that was, I think, 70 feet wide by 100 feet long, something like that. The bowling alley. Yep, I've been there. Yeah. So, um, right in peace, man. I miss it. Yeah. Magic. RIP. I, I mean, it was, it was the best field, best field ever. I, I mean, I have so many memories there. You know, I grew up half my life there. So, James, like another father to me. But, um, yeah. So, Magic, he, he helped us out immensely with everything that he could, um, you know financially just setting things up practices getting the right connections um i mean i think when they're semi-pro like they're practicing x factor and heat like I, yeah. I don't know any other semi-pro teams that really get that opportunity so he uh he definitely helps those guys out he's he's a great dude 
No, Mike, Mike is the best. So another thing I would really like to ask you about because is everyone loves to bitch about oh they don't have time to have this, but you seem to really be able to balance your work, your work and you know your life and paintball and everything. So I mean maybe there's not a secret sauce. You just got to stop being a bitch and keep going on. But do you got any like advice you give to people listening with a help them balance the the work and paintball life lifestyle i mean that's exactly what it is you gotta stop being a bitch <laughs> yeah right <laughs> and, and decide what you really want you know if yeah. if you only want to do you know three events a year instead of five uh, you know are you willing to take all your days off you know because most people get what 10 15 days off a year you're gonna mm -hmm. use pretty much all of them to go play all the national tournaments so are you prepared to do that? If not, maybe you play to have fun. Um, but as far as, you know, getting to the professional level, you, you got to make some sacrifices if you want to do it. I, I mean, yeah. any pro sport was at NBA. They were locked up in a bubble for the playoffs or whatever, like for months. Months, and dude. <laughs> it's, uh, so, yeah, you, you got to make the commitment. And, um, yeah, for me, I mean – my Monday through Friday really doesn't change. I'm kind of lucky because I, I have my own electric business, so I can kind of take off. But I work for some big, um, I have some big contracts, so like the work's less get done. It's not yeah. like I can just take off whenever. But when I'm not, you know, at mandatories, I'm going to do my practices in the morning going into work on a Saturday, sometimes a Sunday if I have to, to catch up from the week before. Cause I was, you know, out or I was just got back from a tournament. Um, yep. so, I mean, it's like, how committed Bro, do you want to be? It, it yeah. comes down to you and, and what you want to do with it. You gotta make, make with it what you will. No dude. And it's not easy. Like we were talking to this again, a little offer, but like, I'm kind of taking a step back cause I don't get any paid days off. If I take a mm -hmm. day off from work, I have to make up that work day later, dude. And I'm fucking, tired like dude, i'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. gonna be 34 this year like dude i'm i'm tired yeah yeah <laughs> so it's like I'm not, like I'm not gonna play but like dude like i just, I just can't take it as serious as i did bro mm. if i could play i'm gonna play if i can i can if i gotta work i gotta work you know yeah yeah i mean i'm in kind of like a new relationship too it, just like six months you know but that was like <laughs> the first thing i brought up I'm like hey listen yeah. a lot of weekends i'm gonna be gone uh, um, I travel a lot. <laughs> like, if you're yeah. not okay with that, like, this isn't going to work out. That's like that is the one, one thing I'm up. so lucky for. Is like, <laughs> I love my girl to the moon and back, and like, she, she supports paintball. Like, she mm -hmm. gets it. She's like, yeah, dude, it's your, you, you want to be good at something. I understand it takes time and money. If you want to be good at anything, she's the best, yeah. dude. My girl is right now, but she had COVID paintball last year. I don't know. She's yeah. going to deal with she's, a full I mean, season. <laughs> she's been my girl for 11 years. She's got six months. Give it some time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wears on any girl, I'm sure, dude. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. But, but uh, dude, so dude, oh, first of all, I want to thank you again for being so gracious with your time, you know, talking to us for as long as you have, dude. I really appreciate it. Um, And so I want to get like, what like last piece of advice dude so you're out here drilling up here in the northeast it's tough one drill dude what's your favorite drill um what what uh, should dudes be doing out here i mean yeah everyone says like snap but is there like oh, what's the one drill everyone should be like have dialed in i mean i guess it kind of depends on your position or your weaknesses but what i like to do is kind of all of it into one right so like mm -hmm. i'll start the st star box and um I'll put a cone that I want to shoot off the break. Then I'll have a cone for edging, a cone for a wide guy. And then like, say it's the Dorito side. Like I'll have, I'll have cones kind of all over the field. So I come up off the break, practice that shot. And I'll, I'll do that, I don't know, 10 times, 20 times. Are you a times. guy, if you miss, you start over again? Yeah, if you miss, get down, do some push-ups, make it challenging for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, if you miss a, sh you know, if you're snapping at a cone, you shouldn't miss it. When you miss it, take a lap, do it again. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I mean, I do, like I said, I come up, I shoot that guy. Once I hit that cone, like I'll, I'll kick out to, let's say, the Dorito one, uh -huh. shooting for like an inside guy. Once I get to the Dorito one, I'll shoot down the wire, you know, hit that cone, go to whatever's inset next to me, shoot cross body for another cone. So, like, Every spot I'm practicing shooting off the break at first, 
I get to my spot. So I'm running and shooting there, trying to hit something. Then I snap out, switching hands, doing the same thing. So I try to incorporate all of it into the same drill, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's shooting off the break, running, gunning, snap shooting, all combined into one. And you're running, you're moving the whole time. So you're gassing yourself out. So you're kind of working on your stamina as well. Right. Um, so you do it, you know, one side, then move all the cones, do it on the other side. But uh, yeah, that's something I like. It's a lot of the, when I when I'm drilling, I'm drilling at a, at a, a field. It's not a private field, right? So right, I have let's say five minutes. So I try to make the most out of it. Out and of that then, time, you know, if I really feel like I'm my snapshot has you know really gone down lately, then it's you know a day of just snap shooting, make yeah. it hard. Um, I like to shoot like. We have these metal poles, so I shoot it. Mm -hmm. I can hear the ding across the field. Yeah, yeah. So I'll snap shoot at that. Um, one of the local teams actually around me that I, I try to help out, they bought a symbol, like a drum symbol. Yeah, so yeah. They it's a good set idea. it up so you shoot off the break or you're trying to like practice on a shot for like, let's say you're running and shooting to a god bunker, shooting for the back center, right? You put that uh -huh. symbol there and you hear that ding. You know, so you could hear it across the field. So it's yeah, kind of nice yeah. to have some, like, if you could, if you have the budget to, but like something auditory is like good, especially if you're doing like a far shot practicing something yeah. like that. If um, you're on a budget, I bet you a trash can lid or something to probably do the same thing. Any, yeah, something like that. Cause when you get into the, you know, the higher divisions where, you know, they're shooting the inside guys, they're not just shooting for the wide guys, you know, they're shooting mm -hmm. your God dude, your, your, you know, first bunker on the Dorito side. And those guys are shooting back at the, you know, back center. So you're going to see those guys start getting shot up. Um, so you can start dialing those shots in. But, uh, yeah, I, I try to incorporate all of it into one or, you know, um, kind of normally towards the end. Uh, but that's kind of my favorite thing to do, especially if you're on a time restraint or, you know, you only have two minutes in between points or three minutes in between points. It's like just do your drills depending on how busy your field is, et cetera, um, and how much paint you have. If you have a yeah. lot of paint, you can do a bunch of drills. If you have little, little paint, then maybe you just work on like a certain skill set, and then the next time you're back, work on another one. Um, but, yeah, for me, it's kind of incorporating all of them is, is kind of good. Um, but, yeah, it's what I, I, I like to do. <laughs> no, it's smart. That's a good, like, it's a good thing. Um, before we let you go into the end thing, Waldo, you have any more questions, man? No, man. I think Jim can thank whoever he needs to thank, and you know, yep. you can write off his sponsors, Jim. Yeah, um, so I would love to thank Charlie, obviously, Charlie Gibbons, the owner mm -hmm. of the ML Kings, for you know keeping this team together, allowing me to join all the all the guys on ML Kings, you know. Um, because they championed us to come on, they they picked us all up, so they believe in me. You give me this opportunity, but uh, yeah, I mean, Mac Dev, Bunker King, uh, Pro Shower, um, Powerhouse, uh, Central Florida Paintball, all those guys, and then uh, James from High Velocity, and then James um, is the man. James is like I said, he's like a father for me. That Nike was broke and you know couldn't afford to play. Like he, he was just the best dude I've ever met. I'd emulate to be like that guy always made sure I could play paintball. Um, and then, you know, uh, Chris Straza also from Battle Creek Paintball. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing. He he made the Wolf Pack, all those divisional teams. It was like 60, 70, 80 kids on Wolf Pack teams. And, like, Straza would just, like, I don't even think he made any money. He was charging us, like, $20 <laughs> a case, and we were shooting three-star practice. But he was – he – he really helped grow the sport in the area, especially in that time, like from 2011, 12 to even current day. I mean, his Battle Creek's one of the nicest fields around. So a huge. Meadowlands was popping back in the day, dude. Meadowlands, I remember being there fucking, there'd be, like you say, dude, there'd be like 20 teams there, 25 man teams, dude. You'd be waiting mm -hmm. online, dude. Yeah, yeah. But him too, he, he helped the sport immensely at that time. We had no fields really in the area, and that was just like a perfect spot 
for everyone in the Northeast. It, you know, he's a great dude. He's been playing for a long time. So, like, big shout out to Estraza as well. Um, and I don't know who listens to this, but if you've never been to Battle Creek Paintball and you're kind of in that area, definitely check that out. If you're on Long Island, come down to High Velocity for sure. Um, and you could see me there every single weekend. Hell yeah, dude. Come battle it out in the castle. Um, so, <laughs> again, yo, thank you for spending so much time with us. We really appreciate it. The, give us your insights to us and the listeners. I love these conversations just as much as hopefully they love listening. Again, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do it. Keep we got we got we got rookie numbers. We got to keep pumping these numbers up. So if you're listening, you haven't subscribed, give us a sub, and we'll catch all you guys on the next episode. Take it easy, guys. So.